In this video, I'm going to focus on the electromotive force. Now, what exactly is that? Any device that converts other forms of energy into electrical energy generates an EMF, an electromotive force. An EMF is basically the source voltage of such device, so it's measured in volts. A battery, for example, generates its own EMF. Most AA batteries, or all AA batteries, they generate a voltage of 1.5. So that's the EMF uh, voltage of this battery. A battery converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Now there's some other examples like a solar cell. A solar cell converts light energy into electrical energy. So it's a source of EMF. It generates a voltage for the circuit. And then you have other examples like a thermocouple, which converts heat energy into electrical energy. And then you have a generator, which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. So all of these, they generate an EMF because they're the source of the energy for the circuit. Now, another way to think about this is an EMF, it causes current to flow from a low potential to a high potential. Now, imagine, consider this circuit. So let's put two resistors. And I'm going to use a 12 volt instead of a, a 1.5 volt. And let's say these resistors are equal in value. So the voltage at the bottom will be 0. Here it's going to be 12. In between here it's going to be 6. Now in a circuit, we know that current flows from a high potential to a low potential. And you could liken this in the same way as a ball it rolls down from a high position to a low position. As the ball rolls down from A to B, the gravitational potential energy of the ball decreases. Now, as the current flows from A to B, the electric potential energy of the current decreases. Its electric potential is decreasing. The potential at position A is 12 and the potential at B is 6. Voltage is the difference between uh, these two, uh, potentials. So the voltage across the resistor is 6 volts. It's the difference between these two values. And electric potential is basically the ratio between electric potential energy per unit charge. So what this means is that 1 volt is 1 joule per coulomb. So when you think of voltage, it's really the energy change per one coulomb of charge. And so as the current flows through a resistor, a resistor consumes energy, and so the voltage, or the electric potential rather, of those charged particles as it flows through the resistor, it decreases because the resistors consume energy and the energy of those charges is gonna decrease. Now what a battery does is it increases the energy of the charges. It does work on a charge. So a 12 volt battery will do 12 joules of work on one column of charge. A one volt battery will do one joule of work on a one column charge. So if you look on the right side, a resistor consumes energy as the current flows from a high potential to a low potential. And so the resistor decreases the electric potential energy of the charges because the resistor consumes energy. And that's why we have a voltage drop across the resistor. The electric potential is decreasing across the resistor. Well, the battery does the opposite thing. It generates an EMF. And as a result, that EMF increases the electric potential energy of the charges. The battery does work on the charges. So notice that in the battery, the current is flowing in a direction of higher charge. I mean, the higher charge, but higher potential. Notice that the current is going from low potential to high potential. When that happens, what that tells us is that the battery is doing work on the charges. It's increasing the electric potential energy of the charges. And that's what an EMF does. An EMF increases the electric potential of the charges. It does work on the charges, so it increases their electric potential energy. Whereas a resistor, which consumes energy, it decreases the electric potential energy of a charge. So you can liken this as imagine going from position 
Let's call this C to D. The ball is at a low position. In order to get it up to D, it doesn't naturally happen that way. You have to pump it up to position D. You've got to put energy to get it up there. And that's what the battery does. The EMF generated by the battery, it does work on a charge. And you can think of the ball as being the charge particle. The EMF, the source voltage, increases the electric potential energy of the charge. It moves it from a low position to a high position. And so as that happens, the energy of the battery decreases. But the energy of the charges, as it moves from C to D, it increases due to the EMF of the battery. But then as the charges move through the resistor, the resistor consumes energy, so the energy of the charges decreases, as you can see by the decrease in potential, until they get back to zero. And once they come back, the battery charges them up again. The battery does work on the charges. It increases the electric potential energy. And then as the charges go back to the resistor, they lose electric potential energy. And the resistor consumes that energy. So you have to understand who's given energy and who's taken it away. So if you go from A to B, the resistor consumes energy. And the charges, they give away their energy to the resistor. Now if you go from C to D, the battery loses energy, but the charges, the electrons that are flowing in this circuit, they gain energy because of the source voltage of the battery. So hopefully that helps you to understand what an EMF does. So an EMF is a voltage generated by a source like a battery, a solar cell, thermocouple, or a generator. And the EMF, it causes current to flow from low potential to high potential. It does work on those charges as it increases the electric potential energy of a charge. So anytime current flows from, let's say, a high voltage, let's say this is 10 volts, to a low voltage, the charges, let's say Q for the charge, are losing electric potential energy. The resistor absorbs the energy, so the energy of the resistor increases. The resistor heats up, it converts some of that electric energy into heat. Now a source will take a current flowing through it from a low potential to a high potential. And so whenever the current is flowing from a low potential to a high potential, that source generates an EMF. And that EMF increases the electric potential energy of the charges. And as you can see, the electric potential is increasing. The current is flowing from a low potential to a high potential. So make sure you understand that. If the current flows from a high potential to a low potential, like in the case of a resistor, the charges are losing energy. If the current flows from a low potential to a high potential, the charges are gaining energy. The source is transferring its energy to the charge. Now, it's important to understand how EMF is related to the terminal voltage of a battery. So let's say if you take a 1.5 volt D cell battery. If you connect it directly across a meter, the meter will read 1.5 volts. Now, let's say if you connect a device to this battery let's say like a 100 ohm resistor. Now the voltage read by the meter might be 1.49 volts. The voltage will decrease. Now if you increase the resistor, I'm just going to write these values, let's say if you increase the resistor, I mean decrease it, to 10 ohms. So if you decrease the resistor, more current will flow from the battery. And as you decrease the resistor, the terminal voltage, which is this voltage across the resistor, it's going to decrease. It might be 1.42. And if you increase the resistor to 1 ohm, it will be even less. It might be maybe 1.25. And so why does this happen? Why is it that if we decrease the load resistance across the battery, the voltage across that resistance uh, decreases. 
This has to do with the internal resistance of a battery. Every battery has an internal resistance. And the more current that you draw away from the battery, the terminal voltage will decrease uh, continuously as this current increases. This current will increase if you decrease the load resistor. So make sure you understand the difference between the EMF generated by the battery and the terminal voltage of a battery. Now let's work on the example. So let's say this is the symbol for the battery. And here we have the internal resistance of a battery. And so I'm going to box it up. This is the whole battery itself in blue. And then we're going to connect it across a load resistor. So let's say we have a 1.5 volt battery. So that's the EMF of the battery. Now let's say the internal resistance is 0.1 ohms. Now, as this varies, it's going to affect the terminal voltage. But let's see what happens if initially we have a 100 ohm resistor. And then we're going to change it to 10 and then 1. Let's calculate the voltage across the terminals. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate the current in a circuit. The total resistance is the sum of these two resistors. So the total resistance is 100 Point 0.1. So now we need to calculate the current. The current in the circuit is going to be the EMF divided by the total resistance. So the EMF voltage is 1.5. The total resistance is 100.1. And so the current in the circuit is 0 0.014985 amps. Now to calculate the terminal voltage, is simply the current that flows through the 100 ohm resistor, which we'll call the load resistor. So you just got to multiply these two values. So it's 0 0.014985 times 100. And so in this example, the terminal voltage is 1.4985. So it's a little less than 1.5, but it's still approximately about 1.5. Now let's see what happens if we decrease the load resistor from a hundred ohms to ten ohms. So I'm just going to write the previous value. previous terminal voltage was this number. Now let's compare it to the new number. So the total resistance is going to be 0.1 plus 10 or 10.1. And so the current is going to be the EMF divided by the total resistance. So that's going to be 1.5 volts divided by 10.1 ohms. And so the current is 0.14 851 amps. Now let's calculate the terminal voltage. So it's going to be the current times the load resistance. So that's 0.14851 amps multiplied by 10 ohms. So the terminal voltage now is 1.4851. So it decreased, but not by that much. And the reason why the decrease is still small is because the internal resistance is small. Now, let's keep the load resistor the same, but let's increase the internal resistance from 0.1 to 1. And then let's see what's going to happen. So let's make this 1 ohm. You can try to calculate it as well if you want to. You can pause the video and work on it. So the total resistance in the circuit now is 1 ohm plus 10 or 11 ohms. And the current is going to be the EMF divided by the total resistance. So that's 1.5 volts divided by 11 ohms. So the current is 0.13. 
six, three, six amps. And so the terminal voltage is going to be the current multiplied by the load resistor, which is 10 ohms. Now the voltage drop is significant. So the terminal voltage at this point is 1.364 volts. So let's talk about what happened. As we increased the load resistor, or rather decreased it, as we decrease the load resistor, this caused more current to be drawn away from the battery. And as a result, the terminal voltage decreased slightly. Now the decrease was only small because the internal resistance was small. Now as we increased the internal resistance, as we increased it from 0.1 to 1, and we kept this number the same, the terminal voltage decreased significantly from 1.485 to 1.364. So whenever you increase the internal resistance of the battery, that causes the terminal voltage to drop significantly. So if you're designing a battery, you want the internal resistance of the battery to be as small as possible. Because the smaller it is, that means that the terminal voltage will not change significantly if you change the load resistor. And that's what you want. You want the battery to generate a constant voltage of 1.5. You don't want the voltage to fluctuate as much. And so the higher the internal resistance, the greater the fluctuation in the voltage uh, will be.